the best bin DLC for Star Wars Battlefront is fast approaching, launching in June, which is about six weeks from now. And DICE have started to give us some more information about what we can expect from the addition. It will follow the same trajectory as other DLCs, but this time the focus is on Cloud City. First of all, I was surprised to learn the DLC was coming so soon after the release of the Outer Rim content. It seems like we've only just got that, but then again, I'm not going to be the one moaning about extra content for this game. As I'm sure you can see from the title, the two new heroes have been confirmed as Lando Calrissian, who is the owner of Cloud City, and Dengar, one of the bounty hunters. These choices are kind of hot and cold. I mean, you couldn't do a Bespin DLC without including Lando. I mean, he literally is the man from Cloud City. But Dengar got me a little bit confused. Many of you might not even know who he actually is. I mean, it depends on how much attention you pay in the films. His most notable appearance was when Darth Vader hired him to seek out Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon in The Empire Strikes Back. He stood alongside Boba Fett. But other than that, he doesn't really make much of an appearance in the rest of the original trilogy. And as we know, Battlefront only takes content from the original trilogy. So they're kind of stuck in terms of how many heroes and villains they can actually use. And it kind of feels like Dengar's inclusion was because they didn't really have anyone else that they could have added. I mean, if we look at the films and then look at Cloud City, what really happened there in the original trilogy? Well, Han Solo turned up in his Millennium Falcon and then Lando betrayed him and handed him over to Darth Vader. So sense would tell you that Darth Vader should be the villain in this DLC. But of course, he was already included in the base game, so I don't think many people would be really happy if only one hero was added in this DLC. So they've gone for Dengar, but he's kind of like a tepid inclusion. I don't really know what he does. I don't really know what kind of special ability he'd really have. So I don't really know how he's going to fit in. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what DICE come up with. And speaking of seeing what DICE will come up with, because Dengar is a very passive character in the original trilogy, perhaps DICE will step out and give him some cool abilities that we might not expect. They've got the chance here to make a relatively boring character, one that everyone wants to use when they get the chance to be a hero. But what else besides the heroes are we going to be getting in the Bespin DLC? Well, first of all, let's look at the maps that are going to be on offer. It's going to be much larger scale than what you saw in Outer Rim. Outer Rim focused on close quarters gameplay and offered players the opportunity to try out some of the smaller game modes that are on offer in Star Wars Battlefront. But one thing that I've always felt about Battlefront is the bigger game modes like Walker Assault, Turning Point, Air Superiority, those game modes offer a much more immersive experience. They feel much more Star Wars-y overall. And it's that feeling of true Star Wars battles that we're going to be getting on Bespin. Up in Cloud City, you'll be able to play the fighter squadron mode, weaving in and out of buildings and moving around clouds for cover. And down on the ground, you're going to get the chance to play in 8080s in the Walker Assault game mode, smashing your way through towns and cities. Sounds like a really cool experience. And even though I haven't seen it yet, the visuals in Star Wars Battlefront pretty much right now are unrivaled. It looks amazing. I don't even need to see this DLC to know it's going to look awesome. We'll get the chance to visit the famous Carbonite Chamber as well. That will be included in one of the playable maps. That's the room where Han Solo gets set in carbon. Another Star Wars fantasy ticked off the list there. We had Jabba's Palace in the last DLC, so here's to hoping they can keep the ball rolling. We'll be getting new weapons besides what the heroes end up with, new star cards as well, and hopefully that will start to satisfy our appetite for more content in this game. Besides the best bin offering, which is all paid for DLC, you need to buy it standalone or it comes in the season pass, DICE are still committed to bringing the base game players more free content more hut contracts with unlockable star cards as prizes, and regular double XP weekends to get you on the grind to unlock higher level gear. The developers also have plans in the future to bring offline play to Star Wars Battlefront, something I think 
should have been added as a feature at launch, but it's nice to hear that it's coming as a free update at some point too. And finally, the devs are planning something special on a specific day. May the 4th be with you. Sounds like plenty more content is coming our way over the next few months for Star Wars Battlefront, and that's good news for everyone who bought the base game, because a lot of it is going to be free. But that's all for today, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the ideas for content down below. Whether you like the choices for the heroes coming with the Best Bin DLC, make sure you let me know. And while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.